Good morning. This is Miss Jen. I am with Include Me in the Ark of Pennsylvania, and we are going to do our Friday story time. And I will wait a few minutes to see if anybody comes on. Um, so while we wait, so I'm not just sitting here, we are going to read My Three Friends and Me, Zule. Um, so this story is about three, no, sorry, four little girls that go to school, I think in New York. We'll find out here in a minute. Um, and they're very much alike. They like to do the same things. They like to have fun. And however, each one of them are a little bit different and that's okay. So we're going to start, I think we have a couple people. Um, let me just, no, I don't want to read that. I don't want to attend. I don't want to give anything away. All right, so this is My Three Best Friends and Me, Zule by Carrie Best um, and illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. In class one to three, there are 22 chairs and 22 desks, 22 pencils and 22 books, 22 hooks and 22 smocks. There are 22 people and 22 names, and one of them is mine, Zule. I want you to look closely, actually, at the desks and at their names. We come to school in our uniform blues by bus, by car, or by our mamas like me. Our blouses ironed, our hair shampooed. Four best friends who help each other. Four best friends who help themselves. Maya, Nancy, Zule, and Ching. We link our arms and skip our legs and sing like the stereo till Mrs. Perkins, the hall lady, tells us to stop. You have new perfume, I say, and she says back, Zule doesn't miss a thing, which makes me smile and show my tooth, my tooth that's loose from eating those carrots that I washed and scraped myself. It's time for school, Nancy says, and sure enough, when the shoe shuffling stops, we all line up for two arm hugs from our teacher, Mrs. Seeger, who leads us to our door. Good morning, everyone, she says. Then her key clicks the lock for class to begin. We hang up our bags and take down our chairs and don't care if they land softly or thunder like a stampede. I feel with my knees for where the chair fits and sit in my seat like Ms. Long at the library, like I can't wait for someone to ask me a question. Inside my desk, there are crumpled papers, pencils and kisses and a folded up cane a folded up cane that I push to the back for later. Then, my mama bought me new shoes, I shout. They're pink, she said, and good for running. But I forgot, there's no talking in Ms. Seeger's class. If you have something to share, Azule, please raise your hand. So I just sit and think about my new shoes and try hard not to talk. Ms. Seeger says, this morning we'll do shapes and numbers and lots of really good writing. Some of you will get help with math and some of you will read with me. Then Ms. Turner will work with Zule while the rest of us go to the gym. And after lunch, there will be a big surprise. I don't like when I hear my name sticking out there by itself. If no one else has to go have Ms. Turner, then why do I? But I don't say the way I feel. I might stick out even more like a car alarm in the night waking everybody up. Now it's time for shapes. What's a pyramid? I go and touch it, all five sides, before I draw one at my desk. Up and down and right to left. I hold the pencil with one hand 
and follow the pencil point with two fingers of my other hand. How's this? I ask. And Maya says, a teeny bit crooked. So I try to draw it straight. Straight like my cane, my folded up cane that's waiting for me in my desk. So, um, Zule's friend Maya is helping her draw the shape of the pyramid. Then we do numbers and Maya says, huh? So I explain the columns of tens and ones until she understands. And now Zule is helping her friend Maya with math. Writing is next. This is what I type on my brailler. One day I'll run and the wind will push me and the sun will shine me and I'll feel like a bird who opens her wings and flies. Only I'll fly with my feet. Today is Ching's turn to type her name on my machine. The dots feel like goosebumps, she whispers, and I laugh. That's how I read, I say. I see with my fingers. Reading used to be hard before my hands learned the way. So was climbing a tree and swimming. Because in the beginning, all I did was fall and sink and not want to do it like I don't want to do that cane. You'll learn the cane too, Ms. Turner told me. But she never said it would be a cinch. I know she's here now. My nose knows her juicy fruit and the smell of the fresh outside. First, Ms. Turner has me feel the cane after I take it out of my desk, that folding, holding, colding cane. I open it and fold it and hold it in my lap. I imagine how I look with this thing that no one else has, and I want to shout no, like I did last time, but instead I try to be patient and get it over and done with. Out in the hallway, Ms. Turner says, the cane will let you walk down streets where there are curbs and corners. One day, you'll be an expert at finding your way outside, the way you are an expert around your classroom. Then we practice together in the big outside with no walls or desks or friends, side to side, side to side. Let the cane touch things first. You have to learn to trust it, says Miss Turner with her juicy, fruity smell. My cane finds a tree, and my cane finds a car. It snaps back and it gets stuck, until I say, I'm so tired, which makes Miss Turner say, Okay, we can go back inside now. I am happy to put the cane away, but Nancy wants to try it. No, I shout and put it back at the back of my desk for tomorrow. After lunch, we dance and sing, shaking our heads and our tails. Maya, Nancy, Zule, and Ching, our arms attached like sausage links as the boys whistle, woo, woo, woo. Soon we're back at the desks waiting for Miss Seeger's surprise. Are you ready? Whispers Ching. Ready, I say. And Nancy says, shh, way too loud for my ears. In three weeks, Mrs. Seeger tells us, we will be having a field day. There will be contests and races and games outside. Some people whisper and some people shout. Some even clap like Maya and me. Go home and think about which event you would like to be in, Miss Seeger says, and everybody does. The next morning we sound like noisy bees, buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. Maya, would you like to cap play capture the, sorry, Maya would like to play capture the flag. Nancy wants to try tug of war. Ching thinks she can walk, holding an egg on a spoon. Everyone wants to do something different. And what about you, Zule? Miss Seeger asks. I would like to run the race in my new pink shoes, I say to a class as silent as stones. I wonder why they're quiet. Except for Miss Turner, 
She's here again. You go, girl, she says. Let's work with your cane on the track. Turning the pages. <laughs> then she takes me to the wide outside. The cane jams and pokes and snaps. Let the cane be your longest finger, she says, when you need to know what's coming. I wonder if I can get it right. I hear other kids, they're practicing too, huffing and puffing and laughing. This stuff's so hard, someone complains. And I know just how he feels, only I'm not laughing because I'm not so sure I can do it. A few days later, I surprise myself. I get from my classroom to the track all by myself, walking with the cane. Now you're cooking, Miss Turner says, and I believe that I really am. Then she gives me a stick of her juicy fruit gum and I give her a kiss of my chocolate. It's time to practice that running, she says. We try our best to glue our arms, running ourselves as one, but Miss Turner and I get all mixed up with our knees and our legs and our feet. Then one day, after so many days, we finally get it right. Ms. Turner and me, our legs and our feet, all know how fast we can go. On field day, everyone is bubbling. I hear mamas and papas and cameras clicking. Friends are here with their yays. My event is the very last, and now it is just about time to start. Miss Turner and I stand at the top of the track, so ready to run the race. The smooth, round track that I know like my hands, the track that I know like my feet. Run, Zule, run, my friends all shout, the way I shouted for them. Maya, Nancy, Zule, and Ching, four best friends who help each other, four best friends who help themselves. Oops, sorry. So with the wind pushing me and the sun shining me, I feel like that bird that went flying. And that is the end of that book. So I don't see anybody making any comments or questions. So, um, so maybe I have a couple questions. So Zule said she was using her brailler and I, I'm not sure if everybody knows what that means. A brailler is, um, a machine that types braille and braille is what we a person that is blind would read with their fingers by feeling on the back of this book is the alphabet and I can feel each of these bumps lifted up as I run across it and so I thought that was an A A the letter A would just be one dot B would be two dots right so you would use this to make your words. Now, in the book, when I showed you the desks a little more clearly here, um, all of them had the names of the students written with letters and written in braille, which is wonderful, so that everybody can learn how Zule would write their name. Now also, Zule didn't really like it when she was singled out to be the only person going with Ms. Turner right so sometimes it's not fun to have to do that but it's okay because miss turner is her she's called an orientation and mobility specialist and she helps zule learn how to walk around and go around her environment with the cane which is really fun and it helped her to run the race and also everybody was very quiet when she said she wanted to do that i think because Probably everybody thought, well, she can't do that because she can't see. How is she going to run? But Mrs. Turner said, you go, girl, because she knows that with a little bit of work, Zule would be able to do that because all you have to do is try. Anybody can do anything. <laughs> all right. Thank you. We'll see you next Friday.